Salutations folks and welcome to Basic Public Speaking. This video is discussing the technical requirements and descriptions of the main speeches. So let's go ahead and get into it. There are four main speeches and let's start with your first one. Of course, speech one. This is the very first speech that you will do for me this semester and it's a speech of introduction. You are introducing yourself to me. I gotta get to know you somehow. All right, so this is pretty straightforward. Technical requirements, there's none. There's no time limit and no outline to do with this speech. I just wanna get to know you. So here is, there are five points I want you to go over in this speech. <laughs> Marker. Name, introduce yourself. Hi, hi, my name is Christy Thomas. All right, with that being said, give me the name that is on your roster. Well, my roster your name that's on my roster. But if you have a name you prefer to go by that's not that name, please include that as well. You can say hello. Hi, my name is Christy Thomas, but I prefer to go by Cookie. Random nickname, just threw it in there. So you get an idea. That way I can associate a face to a name to a preferred name. So in future com communication with you, in case you send me a text message, and I'm like, who is this person? When you go by a the name you prefer, that way I'm not like going, mm, what's your name on the roster? This, is, this just helps me. Okay, so first, just introduce yourself. Give me a name. After this, the second point is future. I want you to talk about future plans. What do I mean with this? If you have a planned institution, institute of school you go to, go ahead and tell me that or a dream school or if you already know the vote the degree you want to seek if you're seeking a degree tell me that or maybe you can just tell me like a dream job like well I'm not really sure what I want to go to school for like I know I want to go to school but I'm not 100% locked in on my degree yet but a dream job for me would be I want to be an archaeologist. I want to go and discover Atlantis. It's there. I can see it. I'm going to find it. You know, that's what I'm talking about here. Or maybe a dream career. Maybe you want to be a beauty influencer. Or perhaps you want to build custom cars. Or maybe you want to be a pro athlete. Or maybe you want to be a card player. Or a professional dancer. You know, just something future. It could be, or... It could be all the above. You can tell me, well, I'm going to school to get an education degree. I'm going to Marshall University, but a dream job if, you know, sky's the limit and you had all the money and all the opportunity and all the doors were open and there was nothing that would hold you back whatsoever. Not that anything's holding you back, but a dream job. Like if you could just say, this is what I'm going to be and that's what it is. Well, you know, you tell us about that. So, so far, I want to know your name and I want to know what you're a future version of yourself. What you would like to do, what you are going to do, what you want. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is discuss, something, dis, discuss something known. Tell me something known. And what I mean, this is something that everyone knows about you. Perhaps you're a basketball player. Maybe you've been a basketball player since middle school or elementary school or a baseball player. You've been on since Little League. You've done the travel teams. You still travel, you're still on travel teams and you're on the high school team and this and that. Something that is known about you or perhaps it's, you know, everybody knows you're an avid book reader or everyone knows that you are, you know, you ride horses or you play golf or you play an instrument or in a band or that you enjoy to do theater. Oh, my notes are going everywhere. I'm outside. So, <laughs> bear with me. So, let's recap that so far. Three out of five is tell me who you are. Tell me about future plans or desires or dreams or career choices. Then tell me something that everybody knows. Maybe it's where you work. Maybe it's who your family is. Maybe it's something that you do. A hobby. Just something that everyone knows. My computer's in front of me with my notes. Then the next thing, we're gonna discuss something not as known. No, 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 no. You do not have to tell me deep, dark secrets. I do not need those, nay, nay. I just wanna know something that people maybe 
don't know, not everybody knows about you. Perhaps you have a job that not everybody knows that you have or a hobby. Maybe you're a closeted book nerd or maybe you're a closeted Star Wars nerd or perhaps you know how to whittle or tap dance or prune a tree or I don't insert here, but maybe not everyone knows that. So let's talk about that. But again, don't tell me your deep, dark secrets. That's not what I'm asking for here. Let's recap those for a name, future, something known to everyone about you and something maybe not so known to everyone about you. And the last one, tell me what brings you joy. Tell me what brings you happiness or calmness in this world. Maybe it's listening to music. Maybe it's hanging with your friends. Maybe it's drawing or painting or just reading a book, chilling and listening to music. Maybe it's just trying some really good food somewhere or maybe it's putting your toes in the sand on the beach or maybe it's seeing the first snow at winter time whatever the case may be in here just tell me what what makes you happy what brings a smile to your face so again this is speech one there is no time limit there is no outline due with this speech the only thing i want to do is i want to hear about you tell me your name Tell me something future wise. Is it school? Is it career? Is it the dream job of the world? Tell me something that everyone knows about you. Maybe it's a job that you have or a hobby that you do or someone that you know, or maybe whatever the case may be, everybody knows this about you. You know, something nice, something not so well known. Like some people know, but not everybody. And this could be a job. It could be a hobby. It could just be, you know, Maybe you're double jointed. I don't know. But don't tell me deep dark secrets. Nay, nay. And then lastly, tell me what makes you smile. What's your joy? What makes you happy? What gives you calm in the storm? All right, folks, that's speech one. Woo, let's ring it up. Speech two. This is an informative instructional how to speech. And that's, it's a how to speech. This speech is you're explaining a physical process or how something works or I kind of describe it as an advanced show and tell because you will be asked to use visual presentational aids and there's a whole section on that we'll cover it in class don't you worry tell us how something works or how to make something the technical requirements for the speech is the time limit is at least three minutes. Now, you can go below three, like two and a half, and you're fine, but it's when you're not even reaching two minutes, there will be, that's when we start to have issues. But instructional videos, I find, tend to go a little bit longer. Um, an outline is due with this speech. We have a section over outlining. Don't worry, we go over it before we get to the speech. All is well. And then, like I said, a visual aid is required. So the technical requirements for speech two, which is an instructional how-to, is you will have visual aid, an outline, and a time, li a time limit minimum. Um, again, this is a how-to instructional speech. You're telling us how to do something, how something works how like the process perhaps you want to tell us how to make a shirt perhaps you make shirts on the side like t-shirts or sweatshirts or whatever you know it could be sublimation it could be vinyl it could be um silk screen gosh it lost me for a second or maybe it's to tell us how to change a tire on a car or maybe you're telling us how to throw the perfect baseball or perhaps you're telling us how to do some tumbling tricks or maybe you make jewelry or you're telling us how to cook, how to make something, how to make the best brownies, how to make the best hamburger. Da, 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 da. All I ask is that if you choose to do a food in the this how-to, you don't read the directions exactly off the box. I want you to give it a little, a little spice, a little pizzazz. Make it your own. There are many ways that you can jazz up box recipes. So that's my only real like eh, kind of stay away from. But you're telling us how to something works. Or maybe you're telling us how gravity works. Or perhaps you're explaining to us how... Which gravity falls into gravity. But maybe how a spaceship, you know, how a rocket. How the rocket works. Or how a car engine works with all of 
you know, its parts going at once. So really there's a huge, but I also want to tell you, do something you enjoy. Tell us how to do something you enjoy because when you, on your speech topics, talk about something that bring that you actually enjoy. It's so much easier to talk. It's so much easier to find that comfort and it's so much easier to hit the time limit because you're not going, mm, I'm not really sure what to talk about here because you're already talking about it because you enjoy it. So keep that in mind for all of your speeches. All right, so that is your second main speech, which is a how-to instructional speech. Again, with each one of these speeches, I will do a separate video that talks about this speech and put it in the speech module. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to all the speeches. Your third speech, I call it a choose your own adventure kind of speech. Let me get it pulled up here. It's kind of a choose your own adventure, but I also call it tell me a story. What do I mean by this? This speech kind of helps you dig deep for your storytelling aspects of public speaking. That's where the story comes in. You can choose to retell a fairy tale, like a book. Like maybe you pick up a Dr. Seuss book or you pick up this abridged version of Cinderella. I don't know. And you can physically read the book. Now, if you go that route of reading me a story from a book, I want you to think of how you would read that book to that age group. So say you pick up a book that is for kindergarten first graders. How would you read that book to them? Kind of change your voice up for the characters, change your intonation and your tone to mimic what's going on in the book to help build suspense or you know, again, a little spice, a little flair. I want you to change up. If there's multiple characters, change your voice. Have how you read this book is reflected. All right. So, the choose your story. You can retell it. You can tell me a story from a book. Or you can talk about a, tell me a fable. You know, like Aesop's fables. An urban legend. You can tell a ghost story. You can discuss a mystery true crime you can discuss a historical event break down a film give a synopsis of a literature like of a book um you can chat about a conspiracy theory um that is just exploring the aspects of um, storytelling of building suspense creating characters delivery of timelines facial expressions vocal intonation and your perspective so if you're discussing a film or true crime or something you can interject what you think like oh i think this happened there are so many vloggers and social media personalities that do true crime or murder mysteries or ghost stories or this or that think of in this sense if you do the tell me a story section of choose your own adventure think of it as you're setting up your own podcast or it would be a vlog because you're recording yourself but i'm if you listen to podcasts you know if anything and they're the storytelling ones especially set it up that way think of it in terms of that you know perhaps you tell us a historical event maybe you're really into like battles perhaps you were into the civil war or war world war world one maybe you want to tell us of a battle then or maybe you're really into um you know ancient egypt and you want to discuss about maybe a specific pharaoh or the lore or you want to talk about you know the creation of mummies or whatever the case may be here or like some of your more famous egyptians even though she wasn't technically Egyptian um Cleopatra you know she has lots of stories or you could talk about how I don't know there's just a whole lot here but I you can think of it in terms of a podcast or a vlog when you're building suspense you're building you're building it up you're telling the story you're kind of interjecting your own thing um like I said there's lots of social media personas out there um and vloggers and podcasts that cover stories like this so you can listen to them kind of get an idea of what i'm talking about here or you can just tell me a straight story from a book um i prefer it be like a children's book don't get up don't read me harry potter i don't need to hear all of harry potter i've read harry potter i've watched it i love it <laughs> but there's no quick way to do harry potter there's like no bridge version like well i mean you're a wizard harry he fights a lot of people he dies he comes back all is well Woo! 
Ooh, that's a very late 60 second. <laughs> anyway, choose like a children's story book to read from. All right. So the next portion of this choose your own adventure, this comes under the celebratory. We learn about celebratory speeches and those are just speeches that celebrate life. These can be tribute. These can be commemor um, commencement speeches, wedding toast, roast after dinner keynote speech acceptance speeches and in memory tribute speeches okay so if you choose to do this section of tell me a story of the choose your own adventure speech this has multiple options as well you are to pick any person living or deceased and give a speech in their honor you can also pick someone from literature television film um, a television series film comic graphic novels to cover in the speech if you go that route, choose highlight, um, you're to highlight aspects of their life, career, and or accomplishments. So this is like a, the tribute in memory speech. So if you're really into literature or comics, you can choose a character. You can choose someone that is close to you that has passed and do like in the memory speech. Or if there's someone close to you that is still with us, you can do a tribute speech. You know, maybe you want to do a tribute speech about your mom or your grandmother or maybe your piano teacher. You know, I'm just giving random here so that's tribute memory or you can choose to do a commemorative commencement commemorative speech for your graduating class so if you're already going to be giving a speech at your graduation great practice or you can just act as though you are giving the speech um you can choose to do a roast i ask that if you do a roast and if you think about comedy central does roast all the time I want you to choose a famous persona. I don't want you to choose who sits next to you in class. <laughs> um, you can choose to do a toast. This is, could be a wedding toast or after dinner toast where you're like, oh, well, thank you. I mean, you know, we're here together. Or <clears throat> a toast of someone who's accepting an award. The key points I want you to remember if you choose this portion of the speech is acknowledge the reason for which you're speaking. You know, you're acknowledging that you're a tribute, that this is a tribute speech to Nana, or this is in a memory speech of Superman, Clark Kent. <laughs> or that, you know, we're coming here today on this day to celebrate our graduating class, class of, you know, 2023. Or, you know, you know so forth you're acknowledging why you're doing the speech and you deliver a speech that relates to the occasion or highlights the general tone so if you're doing a memory speech maybe you're not doing a roast at the same time you know some of those the lines are kind of blurred so just use your use your judgment there we go use your judgment Here's the technical, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Here are the technical requirements for that third main speech. You have a speech length minimum, again, three minutes. I'm okay if it's a little under, it's when you go way under is when we have issues. An outline is due. We go over outlines again. There's even a template uploaded onto Blackboard for you. And in this speech, you will use one in speech citation. So there will be you will have to put a works cited blurb on your outline. Now, for the in-speech citation, if you choose to read a book, your works cited would be the book info. So it would be <coughs> the MLA citation for that book. So if you're reading, I don't know, Green Eggs and Ham, use the book itself as your citation correctly cite it with MLA and guys now there are apps that you can go to that you just plug and chug it's beautiful you just put your information in and it gives you the actual citation itself so all you have to do is boom there it is boom or if you go the route of the tribute memory commencement roast toast honor speech you must use one quote from that person or about that person that will be used in your work cited attached to the outline so you would have a blurb about them and if it's someone that you personally know that you're doing a memory or tribute speech of you can easily find a, I'm sure let me rephrase that you should be able to find a quote that maybe encapsulates how you feel about this person to use in it or to describe them so okay speech three 
kind of lengthy i know but it's kind of choose your own adventure you can go the route of tell me a story where you read an actual book or you can do tell me a story as in retell a fable a ghost story an urban legend a historical event a film a synopsis of a you know a book um, a television series <sighs> what a conspiracy theory hello aliens from history channel <laughs> Um, any of that within minds of thinking it as you're presenting it as a podcast or a vlog. Or you can choose to do a celebrity, uh, a tribute or memory speech. Or you can do a commencement speech, a roast, or a toast. Or, um, well, toast also includes like acceptance speeches for awards or keynote speakers all that so that's main speech number three and your final main speech which is also your final speech for the semester is a persuasive speech and we have a section on persuasive speeches because you know i like to give all the information the persuasive speech is a persuasive a persuasive speech is to motivate your audience to take action or stop action it must correct can excuse me this speech will contain two direct quote citations in your speech which means there will be an outline and a work cited do for the speech as well for your technical um and then we'll, we'll go over how you properly give oral citations in speeches as well but a really great resource for that is news anchors like they superbly flow with their their words so with this final speech, I also want to say, um, same speech length minimum is at least three minutes. Outline and work cited, dude. And this instead of the one is a two quotations in your speech. Now the citations or quotations or whatever, the citations can come from the same source if they both correlate to your speech topic. So in theory, you may only have one cite one entry in the work cited but you would have two quotes from it or statistics or testimonies or whatever we'll cover that more when we talk about um speech flow uh i want to really preference on speech for when people think persuasive speeches they really think it's politically charged and it can be get do not get me wrong on this persuasive speeches are very politically charged they are you know you see them at rallies, especially when there's presidential elections going on or any kind of campaigning going on. It's they're there because they want you, you know, they want to use the emotions to help, you know, help their cause. I don't want to say it like that's simple, but I want you to know though, for the course of the, for the purpose of this class, it doesn't have to be a politically charged hot ticket hot button topic you can do a speech on why mcdonald's is better than wendy's or why this pizza train has the best pizza or why this brand of peanut butter is the best peanut butter or why um you know it doesn't have to be politically charged it doesn't have to be a hot ticket like a hot topic it can be fun and whimsical who makes the best who's the best batman who's the best best superman who's the best doctor and doctor who who's the best shoe brand who has an awesome makeup line who you know can go on and on from here but we'll talk about that more closer to this actual speech so lady so folks these are the requirements for the main speeches thank you so much